So, so Jessica, what are the benefits of being a natural networker? Good question. So I, I would certainly say building, cultivating meaningful relationships. Also, it's a great opportunity to hone your value proposition and also practice your elevator pitch and um, certainly connecting with others. That's very basic. I mean, it, it's just really forming relationships and uh, that could ultimately certainly benefit you down the road in instances where you're in transition or you're looking to advance your career. So when people hear like natural networker, you know, they tend to think it's like this big thing, you know, but really what's it all about? I mean, what, what do you, what is natural? When I hear natural network is kind of to break it down that Marine style, what they call us crayon eaters is that, that, you know, it's just getting to know people, you know, and, and, and get putting yourself in position to know people in the right positions, you know, that kind of stuff. So is that kind of, when you say natural network, is that what you're thinking? Absolutely. Uh, it's as simple as that. It, you know, when you're little and you're, you're starting school and you're meeting new people, those potentially are relationships that could, you can have for the next 30 years. So never stop meeting new people, never stop um, connecting and offering help and, you know, building uh, or, or developing your skills. And um, like I said, from a career perspective, uh, it helps advance your career. It helps uh, to set you apart from your competitors. And, uh, and again, it's about also helping people. I mean, it, it, it needs to be reciprocal. And so when you, when you said helping people, that really meant a lot to me because when we talk about networking today, everyone kind of starts their networking about what they want, right? You know, I've been to many chamber events and it's like, this is what I can do. My business can help your business when it really at the end of the day, it's about helping people and creating a relationship, which you mentioned also, and, and creating a reciprocity relationship where you're offering help and in return, they're offering your help. And, you know, um, something people may need to consider is that they're transitioning, right? They're going to break out of their comfort zone. They're going to get into a new world, right? And so now you got to become that natural networker. And uh, so, you know, another question is thinking about is how can someone improve their networking skills as a natural network, improve their skills naturally, you know? What are some mm -hmm. thoughts there? Um, certainly. I mean, it's always best to start with your immediate circle, with people that trust, that know you, that um, are kind of easy sells, if you will, not to throw in a sell, but it is, you're selling mm -hmm. yourself, and people that can vouch for you, that can speak on your behalf if, if so needed. I always say practice, 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 and that's actually one way of practicing, is starting with your immediate circle um, to, to build your self-confidence. And from there, you need to exude a genuine, authentic self, and you need to demonstrate enthusiasm for meeting these individuals. You know, it, internally, that's another story, certainly. You know, the fake it till you make it. Um, but externally, you need to show that you're really happy to meet them and that you want to forge this relationship with them, that this is going to, this is going to be a strategic partnership. This is going to be, again, going back to the reciprocal uh, component that it's not about you. It's about the collective, about the two of you. And then out of that, where that could go. And certainly always people love talking about themselves. So ask questions about them. So in a way, it takes the spotlight off of you and it puts it all them on them. And then it becomes very authentic, like like the two of us as we're talking. Exactly. Asking questions. I think, you know, a couple of things you mentioned, selling to your family and friends. If you can't convince your mom <laughs> to hire you, how are you going to convince someone that's not in your immediate family circle, uh, you know, or your friends? And, you know, that's the other, I guess I hear that. And it's like the easy sell, but also the difficult one, because they're not going to tell you what you really need to hear, which is one of the benefits of working with a career coach like yourself, someone who can help them understand how they're being perceived as they are presenting themselves via their resume, LinkedIn, which we'll, we'll talk about towards the end, how people can work with you. Um, but, you know, that natural sell and then being of value, asking questions in the beginning is one of those things where, 
as people start to network and the old story, I think it was Carnegie talked about, you know, making friends and influencing others. I think is his book or, you know, I'm not sure exactly the title, but one of the key points I pulled from that was he goes to a, 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 a social event and he's the most well-known and well-liked guy, not because of who he is, but because he always asks questions about the other person. He shows a natural interest in the other person, which that makes that other person feel really good. And that also positions us to learn how we can help them. What, how, how, what are your thoughts on that? Well, certainly, I mean, and, and I, I would say, take note about the person and, you know, write things down. Like if, if you're in person at in an event, a networking event or a seminar or an industry-based conference uh, and you're mingling, you know, ask for a business card if people are still giving them out or some way of, of you know, getting their communication information and then writing little notes about them. So then later on, you can send them a thank you note, just how, how important it was to meet them and something that will you know, that, that you wrote that was significant about them. And that really will show, you know, how much attention you gave to that conversation and how important that interaction was for you and for them. And then you can basically leave a lasting memory and that, that will really set the stage for the ability for you to then build off of that foundation and hey, sky's the limit from there. And it shows them that you are paying attention and that you are really interested in them and helping them. So, you know, those are all really good ways to get started naturally networking is one, think about your family and friends. And that's a lot of what we're going to talk about today with Jessica. And so what I like to do is just, you know, I know Jessica is just give everyone an opportunity to get to know Jessica. So if you don't mind, Jessica, just kind of share some more about you and so we can get to know you and then we'll continue on with the rest of the interview. Yeah, thank you. So hi everyone, I'm Jessica Visick. I am a career coach. I'm founder owner of Your Resume Partner. And you can find me on LinkedIn, Jessica Visick, and also my website, Your Resume Partner. And I'm really excited to be here. And let me just flash up a real quick uh, slide with your contact information and how people can get to know you better so that they don't lose this opportunity to connect with you. Uh, what is the best way to connect with you. We'll talk about it towards the end, but just kind of in the beginning, what's some of the best ways to connect with you? Is it LinkedIn or email or what's the best way? Uh, either one. I mean, um, I'm, I'm on both of those uh, platforms throughout the day, evening, periodically. So, uh, you know, whatever's best is, whatever works best for that person. Okay. So. Okay. So let's go ahead and continue with the next question. The next question being, how important is it to have a strong personal brand when networking oh critical um, especially in today's digital world you know having a personal brand is really more it's probably the most critical of any time in our recent history and a personal brand um, for everyone to know is it's your identity and it's really distinguishing you from your competitors so you need to really take the time and self-reflect to, to truly understand what that is. How does somebody do that? How do they understand their own personal brand? What are some of the things that they can, when you say self-reflect, what, what are some of the questions they need to ask themselves to better identify their personal brand? Because I agree, we all have one. We may not be aware of it, mm -hmm. <laughs> but we do have one and that's our reputation first off. So what are some of the questions that someone should consider? I would first uh, look at what your values are, uh, and then also uh, take some time and look at what you have accomplished in your career and you know, put pen to paper, traditional way, uh, and, and write down what you have achieved, your career wins, and take out of that you know, consistent themes that you see that align going back to your values that, that make kind of create who you are, and also looking uh, over your career history to see kind of your, your progression and understand again, kind of what has attracted you to these opportunities. And from that also the skills that you've gained and kind of putting that, putting that together and, and you can create a brand statement out of that. Another thing to do certainly is your elevator pitch that you can then communicate in 
certainly in, in small groups or, you know, on your LinkedIn profile um, and certainly during an interview. So when, when I hear one of the things we teach businesses that, you know, when we talk about people in their own career, they're thinking about, they need to be the CEO of their own career, right? So as a, as a business owner, when we're consulting them on marketing, one of the questions I ask them, what are the top 10 questions people ask you, you know, as a way to kind of define that? You know, they don't have to really think hard about interior. They just have to think when people are talking to them, what questions are they asking me? And when someone comes to your desk, for example, and just say, you know, they ask you a question, just write down what that question is. And I think over a week, you'll find that there's common questions that they're asking you. And that becomes what you're known for. Right. That's that's what you're known for, your your brand, your reputation and working with that. Have, have you looked at some of those techniques? Yeah, certainly. You know, I've uh, in, in, when I'm consulting with clients, I like to get as part of our engagement. And as we're building out their quote unquote narrative and their personal brand, I, I love to find out from um, other individuals that are in their circle or if um, performance reviews or, you know, depending on the nature of their business, if there's been some client reviews, as well as, um, you know, and I, I'm going to, you know, we'll, we'll speak to this later, but getting those LinkedIn recommendations are critical because more, the more you get and from, from a diverse audience to, to your point, you're going to see those consistent themes throughout that speak to who you are and how other people view you and perceive you. And that will definitely um, assist with, with creating, as we said, the personal brand. Yeah, I noticed that you know, when you said, know you, perceive you, that the perception is, you know, how we see ourselves is one way, but how the world sees us is differently. And uh, so that's very important to develop this personal brand. And I agree, you know, a hundred percent that a strong personal brand, being able to communicate it, and an elevator pitch is is very important uh, and technology is there to help you and, we'll, and one of our partners is there and we'll talk a little bit about them at a different time but there's technology there to help you as well to build your your personal brand and working there so the next thing that i think about when it comes to networking is the next question which we talked about is the fear of networking you know the the fear of going to an event uh, that where you don't know anyone or going to an industry conference or going to a local networking event, uh, you know, based on your target job that you're trying to get. So how does someone overcome the fear of networking, that, that shyness? How do they get over that? Yep. Common, common issue. So a um, couple tips. One, be selective. You know, you, you don't have to go to every networking event. Um, do your research, uh, pick out the ones that you think you can get basically you know, the most out of and, uh, you know, again, do your homework, understand the players that are going to be there and focus on meeting the right people that meet your needs at that, at that time and place and, you know, discussing the issues that, you know, fit into, you know, your, that, that align with kind of what you're, what you're targeting. And uh, I would say another, um, just as I've already said, um, about the doing your homework, do your research, try to get a list of the attendees that are, are going to be at that event and target them and, uh, you know, research their interests and career. So you have something to then speak to. So you're not going in cold and, you know, you're not going to stumble over your words. You'll, you'll seem very prepared, which is going to, again, it's all about first impressions. So you can make that really solid first impression. And uh, thirdly, set realistic goals. You know, don't, don't do a laundry list of goals that you're going to do. Uh, you know, maybe pick out maybe your top three goals and, uh, you know, have a clear vision and understand what you want to achieve out of that event or that networking opportunity. Yeah, one of the things I, I captured when you were saying there's have, basically have a strategy. Don't just go to a networking event to, uh, to, to go to a networking event unless you need to be there. Job searching is hard. It can be stressful. There's a lot of rejection involved in this. So you need to manage your time and make sure you put yourself in position to be successful. So having a strategy and you mentioned research, know who's gonna be there if you can get a list of attendees or someone who else has been there before, maybe get invited to a networking event and do your research, 
similar to what we do on LinkedIn, right? We go to LinkedIn, we do research. We don't just connect with anybody. We try to connect with people that are going to make a difference. And then, and then know what you want. Uh, when, you, when you're building a networking strategy with a client, what's one of the key elements of that networking strategy that you try to develop with them? Well, I would, I would certainly say understand who you're trying to target, uh, as you just said. And then I, I would say understand, what, again, why you're targeting them and, you know, set up some or, or, or establish, um, you know, some type of talk track of what, of what you're going to say and, uh, you know, then present yourself in authentic and genuine way. And just going back, it's all about a reciprocal relationship. So just keep, I just keep kind of hitting that hard. Um, it's not transactional and this is a relationship or strategic partnership that you, you want to maintain um, for hopefully for your career. And having that career plan positions you to be able to talk about your, how this relationship is going to work currently and then where you're going. So then they can see how you fit into their bigger plan for their business or their job opportunity. And I think the other part is they, they know people who know people, right? They may not be a perfect fit for you or them specifically, but they may know someone who is a perfect fit for them. So, but fear, but when, when we get that thing, that, that little butterflies in our tummy and we're going to that network event, what are some ways to relax and get through that nervousness? Well, I, I would say first off, and, and it's about mindset and, you know, I know for me, if, if I'm, if I'm nervous about, you know, something that that's up and coming, I take some deep breaths. I, you know, if you're driving to the location, you know, take a few minutes in the car and, you know, kind of maybe wrote, go through your notes if, if you have notes and just get in the right mindset. And I would also say, be present, pay attention. Um, Cause I think people really get in their heads um, when, when fear takes over. And as hard as this might be, and I've told clients this actually uh, for interviews is convert that fear or anxiety into excitement, you know, go into it again with the right mindset, a positive mindset and go in excited. You know, this is a new opportunity. These are relationships and connections that could make the difference uh, for you and your, in your career. And, uh, you know, go in thinking, all right, you know what? I, I have a realistic goal of, of connecting with one or two people and I can do it, you know, kind of psych your, you know, like pump yourself up like an athlete does before, you know, a, a big, big race or um, a big game and uh, be confident and know that, that you can do it, that it, it's, it's going to make a difference and consistency is the name of the game. So more times you do it, the more it feels natural going back to being a natural networker and you're, you're going to gain all these really fantastic skills that you're going to be able to apply to, to your next job, to, to, you know, if you're looking for leadership opportunity, you know, to, to build that, th those really critical skills. Yeah. When I hear it, like be natural, you know, the more you do it, the more you practice. And uh, one of the things that I like to tell when I'm talking to, when I'm counseling someone, in the supply chain world is that you know always be networking for that next opportunity even when you have an opportunity so networking doesn't just need to be that well when i lose my job or i think i'm going to change positions now i need to network you should be networking all the time and looking for opportunities and be willing to lay off the company that you're currently working for if another company can offer you a better opportunity but you won't find that opportunity unless you get out there and talk to people and i really like how you said that this is the big game you need to be an athlete. You're going into the big game and you're going to get, get got to get fired up. So you want it. victory is the goals that you set going in, which I think you have very realistic goals. I want to meet one or two critical people that can get me a little further than the next step. Just a little bit further, just a little bit further. I don't need to win or get a job tonight. I just need to get a little bit closer to a new opportunity, whatever that might be. And lastly, be present. I thought that was great advice. You know, be present, be there. In other words, don't be at a networking event wondering what you're going to do when you get home 
or wondering about the next day. Show up, be ready. Just like in the big game, you got to score the touchdown. You got to score the goal. You got to be there. And it makes a big, big difference. And that kind of leads us to our, our next question, which is how can someone use social media to expand their network? I just want to kind of set this up a little bit that social media is an easy way to be active without being productive. Does that make sense? So mm -hmm. we want to use social media correctly. So what are some thoughts there when you're networking with social media? What do they need to think about? Well, first and foremost, um, you know, the, the obvious, which we've been speaking of uh, since the start of this, this talk is LinkedIn. You know, I always ask prospective clients, okay, how active are you on LinkedIn? You know, what, what is your, how would you rate kind of your frequency and uh, you know, what, what is your uh, amount of time that you spend, not just, you know, clicking away on jobs. Are you, you actually utilizing the platform the way it was um, intended? Um, realizing there's 800 million members on LinkedIn and 200 countries. That's, that's a massive reach. So, I mean, that, that really means that there's endless networking opportunities. So first and foremost, for, for all that will be viewing this, this, um, or be on this talk is you have to have a fully optimized LinkedIn profile. You know, it, it's just so, so important. And, you know, certainly speak to that and, and, you know, further down um, this talk, but, you know, ultimately um, it needs to resonate with, with individuals that are, are looking to connect with you. And, you know, it, it has to, sh to show that you are taking, uh, you're taking your career seriously and you're not just, you know, having a profile that just has basic information. It, it shows that you're on the, the platform regularly, you're keeping it current, and, uh, and then beyond that, you're utilizing LinkedIn. Um, certainly even um, beyond LinkedIn, there's, there's certainly other, other social media platforms available to really showcase your brand. You know, I mean, certainly Instagram, Twitter, um, Facebook. I mean, every, every platform has some, some ability to, to network. And, but I go back, you have to know who you are. You have to know how to speak to, you know, who you are, what your marketability is and what you're looking for, you know, when, when talking to, to individuals, uh, when you are in a situation where you are uh, in transition or, or need to um, be seeking other job opportunities. You mentioned know what you want. Again, target, build your brand based on that goal you're trying to achieve. And when you mention that beyond LinkedIn, it's, it's, it's a platform where everyone must be there. And it's one of the things people will get when they meet with you in the free consultation is that, you know, LinkedIn review, you know, to, to learn how that should help them. And one of the things I thought about was, you know, beware of your online presence that, you know, <laughs> I teach one of the things when I teach supply chain management, one of the questions I ask people is when, when you Google your name, what do you find? And I say that so that people are aware that they have an online brand that we've talked about a few times here that they may not be aware of. For example, when people research Randall Malden, there's a serial killer in North Carolina that's been convicted, but fortunately it's not my face, it's somebody else's. But they have to have that presence or understanding and awareness of their online profile that's optimized for their objective, their career objective. And they're not trying to get a job, they're trying to build a career and that people will look there. And if you're at a networking event talking to someone, at the networking event, what do most people do? Oh, they're going to, they're going to, I know for me, I'll just search on LinkedIn or I'll do a Google search. I mean, no doubt. Yep. Right. That's one of the first things people do is that after a late, after an event, you know, Hey, I met this person. Let me learn more about them. Mm -hmm. Right. And they, they go to learn more about them. They go immediately to LinkedIn, pull up that profile, see what's going on. And then they might go to Facebook. And so if you have some pictures from college that you don't want people to see, you may want to take them down. Something like that, which, you know, it you know, kind of leads us to our, what are some other things when it comes to social media? What are some of the strategies? Like when people are connecting, what's, what's one way to connect with someone on social media? So if you see someone you want to connect with, or you've done your research and built your career plan, mm -hmm. so you have a target company, how do I mm -hmm. connect with people in that target company? Well, uh, first and foremost, I mean, uh, the great thing going back to LinkedIn, if you go on the company page there, uh, one of the tabs is the people that work at that 
that company organization. Um, what I advise clients when, when doing your research and you have identified targeted companies is look at the individuals uh, and that hopefully that their profiles are visible. You're going to see people that either are second degrees, um, which uh, to, to better understand second degrees is there's a mutual connection, which are kind of the ideal, uh, to be quite honest. So there's somebody that potentially could could be your conduit uh, into that relationship. And uh, I always advise my clients to seek out the logical individuals that would be part of the hiring process. You know, your talent acquisition uh, individuals, your recruiters, um, maybe even hiring managers, depending on the size of the organization uh, that you're targeting. And then in turn, um, you know, if, if there is a mutual connection, then connect, excuse me, reach out to um, your connection, your first degree, and, you know, ex express uh, your, your interest to, for them to introduce you to that person to start that dialogue. You know, in instances where you don't have a connection, find, uh, you know, again, those individuals that would be logically part of the hiring process and craft a, an inner mail message and you know just start on on a on a good note positive note um, maybe the two of you uh, went to the same university or um, maybe you have a shared interest in something um, that you can incorporate but again the message has to be positive it has to be relevant um, and of course circling on you know how important it is that you 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 know have a shared interest and you align to that company and its values and that you really want to speak to them about opportunities or if there is an opportunity that you align to. Yeah, that's one of the things I was going to mention. You mentioned just to be able to connect. So you're looking at their profile to find out common interests, which goes back to optimizing a LinkedIn profile with your background and your hobbies and interests. And there's a way to do that. That's not a Facebook profile, right? So, because when you go to connect with them, they're going to look at your LinkedIn profile and they're going to be looking for common connections as well. So having a common university is, is a great way to get started, but then what's the rest of the story? Where, what uh, nonprofits or charitable organizations are you involved in? One of the things like I'm involved in, in you know, mm -hmm. scouts, that's something I, I find very passionate about. So that if I'm trying to connect with someone, they would say, hey, this person's involved in scouts. And so the, you know, when they, they, they need to like you, <laughs> no one like you, right? You know, people do business with people that they like. And so when they do that, how they do that is through the profile. So it goes back to maximizing that profile and LinkedIn. And one of the things with social media, and this kind of speaks to our next question is that when we're, when we're shy and we, you know, when we're, when we're shy, we believe we don't, we're kind of have that, that those butterflies in our stomach about talking to other people. This is where social media can be uh, misleading or dangerous because you're on social media all day connecting with people and you think, well, I'm connecting with all these people. I'm talking to people on LinkedIn, but they, they haven't quite met you yet. So when someone is shy or introverted, what's some of the things they need to be doing when they're networking? How can they network? Well, I would I would say, first off, get your face away from the computer screen and your your phone. And, um, you know, if, if it's an online event or if it's an in-person event, you know, use the tools and, and, and the best practices that we spoke about earlier, um, setting realistic goals, preparing, you know, your questions, research, 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 know the players, you know, if, if you need to do any practicing, you know, practice kind of your elevator pitch, you know, to, um, practice with people that, that know you and trust you that could give you, you know, honest feedback. So you feel, um, even though you are naturally introverted and shy person, at least you are again, preparing and that you are starting uh, on the right foot going into that event, uh, either again, online and, and, or in person, I would say well, when it comes to, um, other ways of helping, uh, you know, when you're an introvert and, and shy is volunteer. You know, I, I can speak to that. Um, you know, I, I volunteer for a Pennsylvania based organization for my industry and you know, it, it's all online. I haven't met these individuals, but I certainly have taken advantage of leadership opportunities and, you know, 
uh, co-hosted webinars, which help uh, develop public speaking skills and, uh, you know, networking certainly naturally uh, comes with that and, uh, you know, meeting, meeting new people and again, uh, developing uh, that, that really solid foundation and uh, being consistent, practicing uh, those skills. And then uh, just you got to keep at it. You know, it, it not all the events are going to go the way you planned, but just don't give up. I like how you mentioned that, you know, you, you go to your, your, your local events, your own personal organizations, your church, you know, or any other organization that you're in your local town, you know, get out there. You got to get out there. And I think the pandemic, when people were locked down and they were able to get online, they kind of forgot those social skills. That's one of the reasons we wanted to do this interview was about networking, getting back out of the house, getting in front of people and just get out there and start locally, start where you're comfortable, but just get a little uncomfortable, you know, go to a church event, but maybe go to an event that you don't normally go to, but it's still at your church. So you'll find people that are there that, you know, but then, you know, you may realize that there's someone else that is just normally not at those other events that you, you go to. Uh, and, and, and nobody, and I think people are afraid when they go to an event that they're going to be embarrassed or they're not going to know anyone, which is why we're networking in the first place is to get to, to know people and just to, to get out there and, and speaking to the introverts and the shy people. And I can be that way sometimes, depending upon the season of my life is, you know, you just got to break out. You just got to try something different. And, and as they say in the entrepreneurial world, nothing beats the power of hungry, meaning that, you know, when you're hungry, you'll do things you don't normally do. Mm -hmm. And when you're searching for a job and networking, you're going to need to do things you don't normally do. And you can wait till you don't have a job and the bills are coming due. And then you start getting hungry and start doing those things. Or you can kind of adopt that mindset. What would I do when I'm hungry? What did I do before when I didn't have a job? Now I need to start doing those things now while I still have a job so I don't end up without a job and get in that situation again. That mindset we talked about a little bit earlier, just getting out there and uh, it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. easy. You just got to break out. You got to got to do it. Practice, practice, practice. What are some mm -hmm. other ways people can practice networking? I mean, really getting out, like you said, get away from the computer, get out of your office, get out of your house. If you're a remote worker, how do, how do, you, how do people do that? What, what's some of the ways, the easy ways they can do that? Well, uh, I mean, you know, like you said, um, looked for community events that may be of interest to you. You know, like I have a client that is part of, you know, a um, organization um, to help with her public speaking. So, um, you know, that that's great. You know, I know um, me personally, um, you know, was a member at one point of the Junior League, um, which is a great organization for, for women. Uh, it's both from a community based, you know, outreach, but also making connections. So I would say find things that interest you and things that you would want to go back to. You know, you don't want to just right. jump into something like, oh, you know, I don't know. But, you know, start start from there and then, you know, kind of expand. You know, it, it's I think it comes down to, you know, finding something that interests you, that you can be consistent of, of going, you know, joining something that, you know, you can regularly attend. And also potentially maybe uh, an event that has uh, some some content that is going to actually help you professionally. You know, right. some some type of speaker that you you have have admired, and you're like, oh my God, that's amazing! And and you know, take take the time out. You know, if you're working, you know, block that time off your of your schedule. You know, pay that pay that do you know that that attendance fee uh, or entrance fee because at the end of the day, that that's only going to you know, benefit you. So it, the financial commitment, I think tying a financial commitment could also um, keep you on, on that, um, on that right path too. So. Well, I think I like to, I like to say people, when people don't pay, they don't pay attention. Meaning they have no investment. They're not losing anything, you know, and, and I agree, you know, people's time is an investment, but they, I think, you know, paying to go see a speaker or investing in a training, that you need for your career, you're going to find other people then that need the same skills or have the same interests. And that's, again, that common thread that we talked about that starts to build a connection and building friends and, and doing something different and making things, which kind of speaks to our next question is when people are busy, 
How are they networking? When, how they balance all the different things that they've got going on in their life, their family, their current job, and now they need to network for that next opportunity. How, how do they manage all that? Well, I think it comes down to setting priorities. You know, we, I don't know anybody that just, you know, can just, unless you're retired, you know, <laughs> or you have such a flexible, you know, work schedule where, you know, you can, you can really kind of set your own agenda or schedule. Um, but most of the time people have a lot of competing interests and priorities. So I would say incorporating it into your priorities, making it a, a critical. And I, I would say, put it on your calendar. You know, if this speaker or if this training, if this event is something that, you know, is, is like a do not miss, put it on your calendar, put it as a reminder and don't move it. Don't reschedule it. Don't cancel it and set that intention saying, okay, this is for me. This is for my own professional development. This is for, for me to, you know, help in, in, in regards to advancing my career. And that, that I think um, could make the difference in, in that, in that case. I can see you have to schedule it. You have to make it a priority. You have to do that. And uh, I think when you schedule it, if you have other commitments, maybe put all those other commitments on the calendar and then find those pockets of opportunity and then find opportunity networking events during those pockets of opportunities. As I used to tell my kids, it's a choice between reading a book or playing a video game. You know, what, what do you want to do? And, you know, like studying school and same thing here. It's like, do you need to sit at home and watch TV and watch a football game or a basketball game? Or do you need to get out there and network? You know, so you're making a choice. Well, I'm tired. It's been a long day. Well, what's going to happen when you don't have a job now? It's not only a long day, but now you're hungry, right? So making a choice, building that schedule, making a difference makes a huge difference, I think. And, and scheduling is, is absolutely critical. You know, and what do some people tell their family or their friends who may see that they they may not be the top priority at the moment? Well, how do you coach someone to get through those kind of conversations? Well, I mean, I would say just be honest and and recognize that you know what what why are you doing this? You know, I mean, don't hide it. Don't you know, minimize it. Just emphasize to that to those individuals that this this is really this is really critical. Uh, for for me, for us, our family, and uh, you know it. And at the end of the day, self care. I say that a lot to my clients. I mean, don't forget about self care. And uh, you know, a lot of time, a lot of people really do so much for others. They put others in front of themselves. And when you do that, you you unfortunately it actually ends up hurting you. And, you know, when, when you'd have a balance between, you know, certainly helping others and being there for others, but also helping yourself because, you know, it, it, at the end of the day, it's, it's only going to help you certainly. And also it's going to help your family, you know, make their lives better, improve your quality of life and their quality of life. And avoids the anxiety when you don't have an opportunity of sitting in front of you, right? Because that can also create stress and people can feel that around you. And just knowing to, to, to be not be prideful at this time, like you said, be honest and just say, hey, you know, right now I'm looking for my next opportunity. What do you know? And if we get in the habit of that, if we have a career plan, a career strategy, and we've been at an opportunity for two or three years and it's time to move up or move on one or the other, then, you know, people just know. People just know that that's there, which kind of leads us to the next question, which is how when someone's actually unemployed. And they need a job. What should they be doing? Well, and I've been there. I, I've been on the job market, and you know, I'm not going to lie. It's not easy. Uh, it definitely affects you mentally, psychologically. But at the end of the day, um, you know, do your best to maintain a positive mindset, and you know, never, uh, you know, you you just never know when the net, net, next networking opportunity is going to present itself. So you you need to be prepared. Um, also ask for help. Um, as you just said, don't, don't be prideful. You know, most people want to help people and, and they want to extend themselves. And, uh, you know, let's be honest, it makes people feel good <laughs> and really get out there. As I said earlier, I mean, get, s stop sitting in front of your computer screen, your phone. Um, most jobs are not, you know, found 
that way. I mean, certainly you have to follow the traditional path when applying, but when, when you're networking out, you know, beyond a computer screen, when you're actually having conversations with individuals, that's really where the deals happen, where the connections are made, where opportunities that aren't even, aren't even posted out there. And, um, you know, I've had clients where, you know, they've had conversations with companies, uh, through, through connections, through networking, they said, you know what, we actually, you know, we love what we hear about you and we have this job and we're going to actually craft it to meet, you know, your needs because we think you're fantastic. Um, and we want to bring you on and also give as much as you take. So as we said, you know, and, and not to beat a dead horse, but it needs to be reciprocal. So, you know, volunteer for, for that person, you know, take on some, some projects for them, showcase your skills, you know, that, that is going to, that's going to make, make a real, real difference. And, um, you know, you just open yourself up to, to exciting opportunities when you do that. I think one of the things I mentioned when, when you said it was help people help you by having focus, what do you want? knowing what you want and having a strategy where you're going and, and being able to tell them what you're looking for. I think, you know, great point you made that those jobs that are sometimes the best jobs aren't listed. They're the ones behind the curtain. They're waiting for a special person. They don't want to take time trying to go through 10,000 resumes or look on LinkedIn for 10,000 people. They've actually say, okay, this, we're looking for the right person for this job. And that conversation may lead to that job that's not even there and networking and sharing and going in and asking. And, you know, like you said, help as much, take, give as much as you take, right? Give more, give or more than what you take where you're just helping there. I'm here to interview with your company, learn more about your company, how I can help. And you know what? There's other people I know that can help too. And it creates reciprocity in a different way because now you're actually mm -hmm. helping them look for a result without actually being the result, which then kind of gives you some credibility, makes you mm -hmm. different from everyone else who's just launching resumes or pushing LinkedIn apply now buttons and just trying to get it out there, you know, just trying to get it there, which kind of right takes us into that next question is when, when someone's networking, how do you do it without seeming pushy or aggressive? And I, and I need to hear this because I'm an aggressive guy. I'm an assertive guy. I tend to go for it when I, when, you know, sometimes I need to back off and just listen. So, you know, help me when you're trying to network without being aggressive or pushy, what, what should I do? Well, I would say first and foremost, leverage your existing network. So that's like low hanging fruit that people are already interested in helping you. So that builds your self confidence that also those individuals could give you some advice and, and really some honest feedback on how, how to approach that next person. I, I would say as best as you can, um, be authentic, be genuine. You know, sometimes people don't like people that are pushy or aggressive. I, I would say somebody that's confident and knows what they want, maybe turn, turn that into a positive. And once again, and you know, you're going to hear it again, that it has to be a reciprocal activity. It has to be, you know, that give and take that, that mutual benefit, that mutual mutuality, oh, excuse me, I apologize, that strategic partnership that you're developing. And um, then in turn, like we've been saying that that is going to just help forge, you know, new relationship and also uh, set you on a, on a really good course um, or a track when it comes to your career. Yeah, when you see one way to, I, I thought when we were, when I was listening is, is use those keto moves where you kind of redirect your energy, you know, whoa, you know, you gotta redirect your energy. When you're, instead of being aggressive about asking for a job, be aggressive about asking how to help, you know, just shift that energy from away from or directing towards you and how can you help me and turn it towards how can you help them? Same aggressiveness, same assertiveness. It's a natural part of your, your makeup if you're, you're that kind of person. But then you're shifting that energy towards something else that's going to help them in the long run, which then is good because you're showing initiative, you're showing interest in helping them and making their their job easier to find someone to fill those positions, which is, you know, kind of how, what we want to do. You know, we want to be aggressive and they kind of we kind of got those questions back to back. We talked about the introvert that doesn't want to be aggressive. And now we got the aggressive person who 
is just a naturally aggressive or maybe in a situation where they feel they need to be aggressive and finding that balance, which you've talked to several mm -hmm. times, being helpful, mm -hmm. creating reciprocity, being clear on what you want and where you're going. And that helps people help you get to where they need to go, which talks about, you know, how can someone use their network to find new opportunities? I think we talked kind of alluded to those opportunities that aren't listed. How can we use our network to find new opportunities that may just not be obvious to everyone else? Well, uh, the one way is offer your help. I mean, you know, if you have a special skill set, um, maybe come on, you know, be a consultant um, or do some pro bono work um, to really showcase and uh, show to that individual. Uh, you know, what your work habits are, what your abilities are. And then that really kind of opens their mind up to realize, okay, you, you could potentially fit into this organization. And it, it really then gives them, you know, again, that, that sense of confidence and the fact that, you know, Hey, I don't want to lose this person. This person has some talent. And, you know, at the end of the day, also, um, the focusing on relationships uh, is, you know, really important. Presenting yourself as a likable person is, is really, really important. And that really shows your, your professional worth. It shows that you are, you know, genu genuinely interested in forming that connection, um, which again, really speaks to, you know, we go back kind of your, your personal brand. And uh, I would also say, uh, you know, something as simple as a thank you um, when, when you are connecting and you know asking for the questions or sending along articles um, that may benefit them so that is another you know way um, when when networking to, to find new opportunities you know can really uh make the difference so i like how you said that using a, a contract or being a 1099 pro bono work you know they talked about the quiet resignation that was all in the media people kind of laying themselves off or just saying i don't want to work anymore you know for whatever reason and the other side of that conversation, there was a small article I read, was the quiet hiring that companies are doing now. And that strategy is exactly what you just described. They hire you on as a contractor, as a 1099. So running your career as a CEO, as a business is very useful because you have that business mindset. As a 1099, you're a contractor and you're only as good as you're delivering results and as long as that contract. So I think that strategy is, is, is dead on because of the way companies need to hire today. So, you know, they, they hire for many different reasons, but using that 1099 strategy allows them to hire someone, see what kind of work they're producing, good results. They kind of already know what kind of, you know, salary we're looking at. They get to know you as a person and then bring you on full time, right? So that's a great, great strategy. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. You know, the quiet resignation versus the quiet hiring. You know, it's kind of both sides, you know, and companies, you know, they've got to hire people. That personal relationship is key, is key. So, you know, thinking about that opportunities when we're trying to move our career. So we're at a company now and we're in a say, you know, in the supply chain, I'm a buyer, a contract administrator, and I want to move up. I want to now become a manager of buyers or a buyer of larger opportunities, because instead of having a $10 million account, I'm looking for a $100 million account. What do we want to do? How do we network to advance our career to that next level? Well, I would say um, if, if you are looking to go to that next level, you know, move up the career ladder, certainly you, you need to identify opportunities to develop the specific skills needed to move up. So that would require you attending maybe some seminars, some conferences, potentially trainings, in-person trainings um, are, are great as well. Um, one, you get that the, the credentialing from that, um, you get that, uh, maybe some technical skills out of that, um, which certainly will make you more, uh, give the company that confidence that you are ready, uh, to move, move up and potentially, you know, even if you, you do, let's say, move up to that next level, let's be honest, maybe you're in a situation where, you know, personally that you want to move up that career ladder, but maybe the company, your company that you're currently with as great as it is. Maybe things are slow. Maybe, you know, with the current economy, they really want to move you up, but maybe it's just not in the budget. They, 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 your boss says, Hey, you know, I, I definitely see that you are ready for that next step. 
supplement, but you know, it's just not going to happen for maybe six months to a year. Well, that, that to me would indicate, okay, you know what? I am ready for that. Let me, let me do all this continuing ed or go to these conferences um, to understand, you know, what, what I'm going to need to do to confirm, you know, to, to yourself that you are ready or that you need to gain some additional skills, then maybe I need to start looking externally. You know, don't ever feel that you are married to that company. When you know that you want to advance, realize that sometimes it's not going to happen where you are, that there is certainly, uh, you know, other, other homes for you that could uh, give you that opportunity and, uh, you know, start a new, a new chapter. Yeah, I think it was, I was listening, I was like, man, she's got a, such a great point right there. And there's a couple of things that, that I wanted to illustrate. One, they may not be in the budget to move on. However, they may like you right there, meaning you're the person doing that job. You're doing it better than anyone's ever done it. And if they move you up, then they got to put somebody else in. And now that's going to be a challenge, right? Now they got to go hire someone else who's not as good as you. Right. And now, and they're keeping you right there, you know, despite what they're saying, now budget, it's not time. You need more experience. If you feel it's time to move on, getting to those training and networking events, you describe, get out there and get those skills. And as I mentioned earlier, be prepared to lay off your company. If they're not supporting your career goals, then you need to build your own career and move on to another company. And it, it, I think it tells the company you're working for a couple of things too. One, you're moving one way or another. You move me up or I'm moving out. One or the other, you know, your choice. However you want to do this. If you like me and want me in your company, then you need to move me up or move me out. And I think you know, a lot of people speak to, you know, pay is one thing, but career advancement is also very important to people. They want to get to that next, that next level. And if they don't see a path forward, then they don't want to be stuck. You know, so they want to be able to do that and learning new skills and that kind of, you know, talk to how can someone use networking to learn new skills or knowledge? What are, what, how, what is this strategy about? I thought I read this question, like, you know, this is really interesting. How can someone use networking to gain new skills versus just going out and getting skills? What, what, what are some of your thoughts there? Well, I, I would certainly start um, as you're rubbing elbows with, with um, other professionals, kind of get their feedback. You know, how, let's just say you're at, you know, an associate or, or individual contributor in a, in a certain vertical and you, you have the foresight and said, Hey, you know, the next two or three years, I want to be basically in your shoes. So maybe walk me through kind of how, uh, what your, the steps you took, what did you, what did you do, uh, professionally to advance your career, maybe get their you know, their history, if you will, that's certainly one way. And as I've already said about seminars and conferences, I mean, that, that is very, you know, an easy low hanging uh, fruit there when it comes to um, learning your skills and meeting again, meeting up professionals. One, you, you gain that, that, that the additional knowledge, but also you're meeting other professionals. And then again, having those conversations because those other professionals, might be at a conf the conference and it might be on another subject, maybe a more advanced subject. And maybe that that's somebody that you can meet and that could potentially be a mentor for you. You know, it it's, you know, if, if, if your goal going into it is to learn that skill, well, learning that skill will take you to what, what that next level. So, you know, I think, you know, I want to throw in mentoring is, is definitely another really critical part of relationship building um, and can, <clears throat> excuse me, establishing connections because mentoring can also help with skill building as well. And one of the things when you mentioned, it goes back to LinkedIn history is our ability to research. We can, if we have, if we're into this position, buyer, you know, say they want to move up to that next position, LinkedIn will tell you what to do because you find people who have the job you want. And then look at their history, look at their certifications, look at their training, look at their skills, and then measure that against your training, your skills and those things. And then you can find the gaps and also will help you kind of talk to them when you're in that interview saying, well, this is what I'm doing to advance my career. This is where I'm headed because I know to get to this level, I need to do these things. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So I think you know, going back to LinkedIn research, knowing what you want, knowing where you're going knowing what you want, what your target is, what you're trying to accomplish, doing the research to find out what you need to do, and then 
get there and, and take action mm -hmm. on doing that. Break out, get out from under, behind the computer, as we've said a couple of times. You know, and it, you know, when someone's not confident in their abilities or their knowledge, their own skill sets or their knowledge, maybe they're acquiring a new skill and they haven't had a chance to mm -hmm. practice it in the workplace. Mm -hmm. How are they going to use their network to, to help them in this area? Well, I mean, one one way is outside of their, their current job scope, maybe find opportunities that you can start to build that skill. And, um, you know, as we've been mentioning about the volunteer component, uh, volunteer for different organizations, um, maybe within your industry that could help in that endeavor. And, you know, that, that builds confidence, that builds, you know, that, that gives you kind of that kind of that real life experience um, using the using those skills. So I would that would probably be a good avenue to look into. Yeah, what comes to mind is transferable skills. Using the pro bono work, the volunteer work to create transferable skills. Saying I was a project manager for my local charity where I was doing specific work. And as a result, those skills are transferable to my new or target position of being a project manager or, you know, something like that, or, you know, your friends in your network give you an opportunity because they're your friends. They're probably being a little more forgiving, allow you to try something, experiment, take on an extra project, uh, give you that opportunity to break out and do different things, you know, just having those transferable skills. And I think going back to having someone like you review their resume to identify identify transferable skills like we've talked about where you know you mentioned like, you know working for that charity and says okay this is how jessica can help me transfer that charity work i was doing into a job skill for that target job i'm trying to get so you're, mm -hmm. you're helping your local community and you're creating a skill set that is transferable and i think that's a, a new buzzword that may start popping out is what skills can i transfer to a new position especially mm -hmm. as an economy is changing and morphing into new skills they need they need to find people that can transfer or, or transition into new positions. What are, what are some of your thoughts on that? Yeah, certainly. I mean, what, what really kind of from, from what you were saying is the career pivot. Uh, people are doing a lot of career pivoting. Um, I, I've been saying because of, you know, maybe one, uh, their, their industry they're in, there's uh, not growth or there's unfortunate layoffs. So they have to start thinking, okay, outside the box and seeing, okay, where can I go? And it's, it's daunting. Like, you know, I, I've been doing X for so many years and that's all I know. Well, you probably, you definitely know more than you realize. And, and to your point, I mean, certainly that's an area that I, I really work hard to, to pull out of my clients and to recognize that they're, they're, they're more than kind of in their box and to, to realize that they do, yes, have those transferable skills. They, they have value, value that could be applied to to other positions that they didn't even really consider and again it, it can really open their eyes and open their minds to you know a potentially a more exciting opportunity that they didn't even consider yeah you know, great if people are transitioning making a change why not make change into something you want to do it mm -hmm. better be a position or a company you want to work for if there's a target company you've always you you, you buy all their stuff or you always go to that specific cafe or whatever it is. It's like, Hey, well, I, I want to work for that company, which then speaks to employers, right? Employers need to create cultures where people want to work there because people now have a choice where, you know, a few years ago, companies had the choice on the best employees. Now the employees have the best choice of the company, com the choice of the best companies. So that, that, that knowing that getting out there and breaking those, those barriers, just doing something different is, is key. And I think we're going to see a lot of that as the economy starts to evolve here over the next few years, just transitioning into something different because the supply chains are mm -hmm. different, changing, prices are changing, the economy is changing. So people are going to have to make moves. And as I'll say this all the time, is nothing stops the clock. So you need to start working on this stuff now. You need to bring in professionals like Jessica that can help you look at your resume and talk to you about your LinkedIn profile before you need it. You know, the last thing you want to do is be in a situation where you need something and now you got to build it. And that takes time. Everything takes time. So so think ahead, be prepared, Don't, never get comfortable. Always try to find other opportunities. Mm -hmm. And it kind of brings us to our last question is when, when we're networking all the time, we're starting to feel that burnout, that overwhelm. Well, what do we do? How do we, how do we work with that? Sure. Well, I would say take a break. 
No, I mean, you know, take care of yourself. Go outside, get move, incorporate movement into your, your day to day, you know, put on some silly, funny show, you know, mindless show. If that's, if that's what's going to help you, I, I would say just disconnect at times because it, it starts to really, it does, it starts to really wear you down. I, I would say have conversations with people you, you love and trust, but it's not about that subject matter. Talk, talk about you know, what's going on with them and, you know, things outside of that, of that, um, that sphere that you've built. And again, a recharge, I, I think really take the time, self care, recharge, and don't feel that you have to be doing this 24 seven. And I would say pace yourself as well. You know, again, set realistic goals, look at your week, you know, when, when you're in transition, um, you know, you look at your calendar and you establish blocks of time that you're going to devote to um, your job search and whatever that means. It's, 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 you know, a variety of things that go into your job search, but also carve out time for yourself, carve out time to spend time with your family, your friends, you know, do things for yourself. Um, because at the end of the day, um, you know, if you get to the point where you are burned out or worn out, it's going to start, it's going to greatly affect your job search. Uh, you're not going to have the same mindset. You're not going to have the same level of motivation. And at the end of the day, it, it's it's going to really slow you down and um, ultimately really hurt your job search. Yeah, I think it's going to show up, you know, is that if you're feeling burned out and worn out when you're trying to talk to that job, you know, they're going to feel that burnout. They're going to feel that, that, that fatigue, that job fatigue that you're, you're, you're feeling just because they can see it, they can feel it mm -hmm. as well. And, you know, it speaks to what, you know, we talked about earlier, just, you know, have a schedule and schedule your off time, schedule the time when you're not going to be in front of your computer, get up and move. I agree with that a thousand percent, just break, break the thing, you know, just, just get out. You know, if you're sitting at your desk all day, looking at social media, doing your LinkedIn thing, networking, then you, then you gotta, you gotta just get up off your desk and walk the dog or pretend you have a dog and go for a walk, <laughs> something <laughs> like that. Just get out there and just do something different. And so, so when people are scheduling this, what's the kind of effort that we should expect to, to put forth looking for a new opportunity? Let's say when I have a job, what kind of effort should I put in? And then when I don't have a job, what kind of effort or hours per week or month should I look mm -hmm. at investing in finding a new job? Well, I mean, it, I, I would say from, from a amount of hours, I mean, you know, it, it depends. It depends on the person, but I, I would say, you know, look at it is uh, how much time you put in is ultimately the output of it. Right. And be very deliberate on the steps that you're doing. Don't put so much heavy emphasis on one part. You have to spread the whole process out throughout the week and um, every every start of maybe a sun, Sunday Sunday night, you know, look at your, your calendar, establish, you know, days, you know, certain days that this is going to be what you're going to devote your time towards, you know, could be 20, 30 hours possibly. I mean, it, it's it's hard. It's hard to really I I haven't really gotten to that level of metrics per se, because again, it's very specific to the person. Um, but I, I would say, you know, on average, 20 to 30 hours is probably fair. But again, you have to be very strategic. You have to right. look at the whole process, the whole picture, because if you, again, top heavy on one area, it, it is not going to yield the results that you, you hope. And then you're going to get frustrated. Then you're going to get overwhelmed and kind of back to square one, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Productivity does not, activity does not equal productivity, right? having that strategic plan, having those things done to where, you know, and again, working with a, a, with a career coach like Jessica helps you stay on track and not get distracted. Your family is your family and they love you. They don't want to hurt your feelings. And they're going to try, you know, so think about that. And, you know, and then someone would say, Oh, well, it's the expense of working with a career coach. Yeah. It's so expensive. It's like, well, it's expense is relative. If you're running a business, we have to spend money to make money for finding a new job as part of our business career, career business, you know, we need to invest in things and we need to look at using the right tools, mm -hmm. the right people, the right consultants to help us move along down that path. 
which is one of the reasons we had Jessica on our interview today. So then now's the time I'd like to give people more opportunity. I'm gonna bring up your contact slide and just ask that you, as this is up, and then I'll bring it up and take it back down. Just kind of share with people exactly what is the best way to connect with you and work with you. And then we'll talk about the free offer. So go ahead, Jessica. Certainly, um, you can send me a LinkedIn message. Um, my um, my website certainly offers, uh, you know, at the uh, a page where you can um, send me a submission, um, and and I can get that to my email um, or my email. I mean, really, all the the forms um, that were given, I will get access immediately to, and I'm very prompt in my response, and uh, you know, I, I look forward to hearing from you. So when people are reaching out to you. One of the things you and I mentioned before as part of doing this interview, you, you offer a free consultation. It's something that you offer to people to work with you and to get to find that consultation and set that up is for people to go to your website, yourresumepartner.com slash contact, and then they can reach out to you and talk mm -hmm. with you about that consultation. Mm -hmm. What does that consultation look like? What's the value of me mm -hmm. investing my time to just mm -hmm. even, even though it's free, I'm giving you my time, right? I'm giving you... Sure that kind of thing. So what's, what kind of benefit will I get from that experience? Well, certainly the, the benefit would be, uh, you know, you get a 15, 20 minute free consultation where I will provide you with very honest feedback. I will ask you very specific questions around your career goals and what your needs are. And, you know, I will, I will listen and again, provide you with very, um, uh, honest and valuable um, responses and feedback and give you a, a nice overview of, of how my process works, the results that, you know, certainly um, my clients have, have gotten from working with me. And, you know, certainly out of this, this talk here, um, you will realize just the, the passion that will come through, just how much I, I really love what I do and that all I want to do is help somebody. And, that's that's really what it comes down to. Yeah, I definitely can see the value based on our interview. A lot of knowledge, a lot of wisdom, the ability to to, to help somebody navigate this process is, is really, really obvious based on our conversation today, as people can see, and uh, then they can realize this. So definitely for everyone participating and watching today, make sure you reach out to Jessica, either on a LinkedIn profile or at her, her website. I'll pull those up real quick just so everyone can see that, you know, this is where you can connect with Jessica. You can get to know her better, ask some questions, set up that free consultation, get some more eyeballs on what you're doing and, you know, just have another set of eyes. And I'm guilty of this probably more than anyone where I see something, I see something I produced. It's perfect. But then I have misspelled words. I have typos. I have double words. I have all kinds of things in there that my mind eye doesn't see that only someone from the outside can help me find. And that helps them, helps everyone get better. And Jessica is the perfect person to work and help you achieve those results that you're trying to achieve with your career. So as we kind of wrap up the interview, Jessica, any final thoughts or anything that, you know, you want to kind of leave with our audience? Well, I, I do want to say, um, you know, I'm, I feel very fortunate I had a chance to talk today. And, you know, always keep in mind, really, ultimately, the value of networking, you know, gaining industry knowledge expert, you know, expertise, um, what you can provide to your network, as well as what you can get out of uh, networking. You know, you can gain industry knowledge, but also you can give industry knowledge and you can provide expertise to, you know, within a technical field. And, you know, realizing, you know, that one connection, it's like a spider web could, could really just, you don't know where it can go and just stay positive and don't give up. Okay. Well, again, I appreciate your time today in helping us with this interview and getting the information out to folks to help them in their job search. And networking is a critical skill. I think it's a, I want to use the words forgotten skill because the pandemic allowed us to leverage the internet so well that people have forgotten the human connection that they need to make to make a difference when they're applying for a job or looking for an opportunity. So, you know, the, the words we heard today just made a significant difference is going to help quite a few people. Uh, again, thank you for everyone being here and we'll see you on the next interview.